monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. You enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Adam Alfia about the slow death of customer service. Adam Alfia, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Hello. How are you, John? I am doing well. It is great to be with you. We've been preparing for this for a long time, and we both have busy schedules, and I'm glad we were able to make this work. You're joining me from a convention in Atlanta, so you're busy and taking time out of your schedule to to meet with me and share your insights with me and the audience. Uh, I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. Today, we're going to be talking about the slow death of customer service. As we get started, I wanted to share uh, Adam's brief bio with everybody. In 1992, at the age of 20, while pursuing his BA at SMU, Adam then became a serial entrepreneur specializing in hospitality industry and technology sectors. He is the managing director of Phonternet LLC DBA. Maestro Personal Assistance is a pioneer in the emerging industry of personal assistance. And I would love for you to just provide a little bit of color and additional background to your personal context and and the businesses that you're running. uh, And then we'll dive on into the conversation. Sounds great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, when I was in uh, in uh, SMU, <clears throat> our entrepreneurship uh, class professor uh, tasked us with coming up with a you know something to do a, a a business plan on, and I knew nothing at the time about automobiles, but I I owned a Jaguar and I just got my car out of the service shop. I go, man, that was an expensive oil change for nine hundred dollars. So uh, I decided to to do a business plan on auto repair for foreign cars and ended up. On, on paper, it looked great. So I started an auto repair shop when I was still in college, uh, grew those to four locations in 2005, sold those all, sold all of them, and went into the uh, technology space. Um, the Phonternet, as you mentioned, platform uh, was, uh, you know, right around the time that GM and OnStar were really taking off. And that was a GM product only. And, uh, it, you know, I, I saw the commercials that they were doing and how the customer experience and, you know, there's always something there for you to answer your call whenever you, you want it. So I decided to kind of duplicate that, but offer it to car dealerships. Um, so anytime you sold a car, it came with your own personal assistant. And it went off really, really well. It was well received. And uh, just a few years later, uh, uh, Infinity called us. And said, "Hey, we like you have a bunch of our dealerships that are offering this platform. We want to uh, take it under our wing and, and label it Infinity Personal Assistant and include it with every car we sell." Uh, we launched that, and now we support four manufacturers. We have uh, Infinity, Nissan, Subaru, and Mitsubishi. Any of those vehicles, you push a button in the car for help, and you come to our call center, which is located well, still is located in Dallas, but now after the pandemic, everybody's working remote. We've begged our employees to come back and uh, no go. So, you know, now we're, we, everybody's remote, which has actually turned out to be kind of a blessing in disguise. It's easier to manage, but nonetheless, um, <clears throat> uh, since then I opened uh, a bunch of hospitality concepts, uh, primarily restaurants, bars, nightclubs, etc. cetera. Uh, I was single at the time when, uh, when we launched infinity and 
had a little bit of capital laying around. So we opened up a nightclub and now we have uh, between the nightclubs and restaurants, I think we've got, you know, close to 20 locations throughout the state of Texas. And now we're expanding our restaurant concept into various markets, actually the next markets here in Atlanta. So um, it's been a wild ride um, while I've been doing all of that. I really, you know, especially with the call center and being so hypersensitive to the customer experience, all that it takes to make a customer smile over the phone, because you've called call centers before and it's a usually a very negative experience. You know, everybody dreads calling a call center. You always think you're going to get somebody in India or a low level worker that really doesn't care. Um, our uh, premise was the opposite. We want you to hang up the phone and go, wow, that was an incredible experience. Uh, you know, our motto is anything, anytime, anywhere. So you can call us with pretty much anything and we'll, we'll do our damnedest to, to, to make sure we take care of it with a smile. So using that and being in that world for so long and training our agents on how to sound happy over the phone, which is an art of itself. You know, now that I had restaurants, um, walking in there, a lot of times, especially on the newer, newer places, nobody knew who really, who I was. I was more of the guy behind the scenes. So I'd go in there kind of like a secret chopper. And I was um, I was unhappy with the things that we, I was seeing. Not only that, that translated into negative uh, Google reviews, uh, customers not coming back because of, you know, the uh, servers. And when I really did a deep dive, it's it's really the age group of, you know, because waiters and waitresses, servers now they're called, um, used to be a career where you would have a server that was a server for 20, 30 years. And that was their job. And now it's more of a stepping stone for people coming out of college, people in college, to kind of just to do for a couple of years and then do something else. And really with that, and, and it was with a lot of businesses, call center work, et cetera, you see that nobody chooses that as a career anymore. And really, when they are working, they really don't care as, all, as much as they should. And the customer experience really lacks um, and, and suffers because of all that. And, and I think it's, as generational, the generation of you know the, all the kids that grew up behind their cell phones are now <clears throat> they they lack interpersonal skills. They can't read a customer's face when they know that the customer is not happy or not enjoying their meal. It drives me nuts when I go to a restaurant and you know the the I I think that the server should look at your plate before they pick it up and if it's halfway eaten and not you know it looks like you didn't finish your plate, ask was everything okay? Can I get you something else? I see that you didn't enjoy your meal. But none of that is there. So now we're having to retrain our customer, our employees to really be sensitive to the customer experience. And, and really, the reason we launched the real-time feedback platform was internal use, because I wanted the customer to let management know that there was an issue. And one of the things we found is, especially now, we would have a manager. We started a program where a manager would have to touch each table before the, the customer left. Just to walk by, hey, I'm the manager here. How's everything? Is there anything I can get you? And even then, uh, people did not like complaining face to face. It was very, uh, to them, it was uh, a little bit confrontational if there was an issue. So they would refuse, you know, they'd say fine. And we find that fine is another four letter word for not great. So we implemented the, the, the uh, digital uh, communication platform feedback in our restaurants and it just, really transformed the way we were able to uh, react to the customer experience. And a manager would come over ex immediately. Hey, I just saw that you said that your crab was cold. Uh, can I get you another plate? Let me make it up to you. Let me buy you some dessert or take care of your appetizers. And it won customers over because they were, a they were able to get engagement in real time. And the engagement started digitally rather than a face-to-face -face conversation. And I think that really is the, the secret is to start them off on a digital experience and then it off ended off in a personal experience. Well, I love that. And you just laid out a whole bunch of examples. You know, as I as I introduced the topic for today, I said the slow death of customer service. And you just gave us a bunch of examples of how uh, customer service is often lacking in our experiences, whether that's in a call center, in a restaurant, or some sort of hospitality setting. Uh, really, whatever we, we might be talking about, I think we've all experienced that and the frustration that comes, especially if you're if you're making the choice to go out, you know, on a date or, you know, with your your partner or with, with your family to go have a meal, to go experience some uh, cool thing. And then you have a negative uh, customer experience uh, that certainly will impact your future decisions. 
and, and so it's, it's really, really important for organizations and for leaders to make sure that they're training their people on how to be more effective in their customer service. And I love how you tie in the digital immediate response uh, and feedback into this personal care touch. Uh, we've seen it. I, I've seen it both ways, right? I've seen it where you have the the uh, manager come by and say, hey, how was your meal? Like you said, most of the time you just say, uh, it, was, it was fine. <laughs> you don't right. really want to get into it. You just say it's fine <clears throat> and move on. I've also seen where organizations have had the real-time feedback, the, the digital feedback, but it's not, but the two aren't connected, right? And so you end up sending a survey response or a, a quick um, feedback response and it doesn't actually change anything or do anything. It gives them some data, but it doesn't improve your experience uh, in the here and now. And so what you're describing is a way to tie the two together where I can provide real-time feedback, where that will then go to real people who will then be able to provide real personal touches to then address the issue. You know, maybe I go into the bathroom and the bathroom's a mess and, uh, you know, I can provide some real-time feedback. And someone can go not only fix it, you know, clean it, but they can also stop by my table and say, hey, I'm sorry about that. What can we do to make it up to you? Those types of little things can make a really, really big difference in the customer experience. Saving that customer, buying them, you know, a uh, free appetizer that costs you, you know, pennies on the dollar, but now you've saved that customer. And what companies don't realize is that, or the employees don't realize is all the work that goes into a customer acquisition cost to get that customer to actually come visit your location. And one unhappy employee can ruin that whole experience. One of the things that drives me nuts is how poor of a selection some restaurateurs have on their um, for their host or hostess at the front. That is the first person that per, that your customers interact with. And if they're not friendly, even they can do a crappy job on the table selection, but at least have them be friendly. Where they come in, hey, not a problem. Can I get you a glass of water while you're waiting? Things like that that really uh, open up. You know, what am I going to expect from this restaurant? And that a lot of times that, that hostess or host is going to be really the first indicator of what kind of experience you're about to have. Monetizing digital services since 2004, boosting the entertainment industry by making digital content accessible for everyone. AWG, where innovation meets monetization. Yeah. And I want to make a, a bridge to a, a related topic. Um, so we're talking about the customer experience. So much of the principles of what we've just been talking about apply very directly into a larger conversation around the employee experience. Uh, if we look internally within the organization, so often the employee is the customer of the organization. And, and there's, there's service areas within the organization, such as the HR department, that in large part, there's, their purpose is to be the customer support center, right? For employees uh, who need help with various things or have complaints or concerns or whatever. Um, and how often do we have these same exact problems within organizations with our people uh, where they're not having a good employee experience? And if we, if we shift the framing a little bit and think about it, in the same terms as we think about customer experience, if we want our our customers to be engaged and to be loyal and committed and to come back again and again and again, you know, we want those same things with our people, with our employees. We want to select great people. We want them to choose us. That we want them to to stay with us. They, we want them to be engaged and loyal to us. And that then directly leads into better customer service and better customer experience. And so you know, the same principles that we're talking about in terms of opportunities for real-time feedback uh, and then a personal touch point. I, I think it it absolutely applies within a team setting as well. And I know that, you know, as a as a manager and as a leader myself, that I I love to get feedback from my people so that I know how to make adjustments if they're having a bad experience, if something's hurting them, especially before it gets to the point where they say, ah, I'm done. I, I'm fed yeah, up. Quitting. I want to leave. I want to go somewhere else. And I'm, sh I'm certain that in the hospitality industry, this is something uh, that a lot of uh, organizations can pay closer attention to because it's a tight market and it's tight labor market. And it's, it's hard to get good people and to hang on to them. Right. And, and I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up. So it, it's funny about 40% of the feedbacks that we do get through the platform is from, uh, from employees. So especially in the arena space, 
where, you know, on a given event, they might have anywhere from two to 400 people there. A lot of them part-timers that are just coming there to get, you know, earn a little bit of extra money. <clears throat> so what they've done is since they get, can give walkie talkies to every single employee in the building and everybody has their cell phones, um, we buy branded URLs for every one of our platforms. So for example, American Airlines Center is one of our uh, longest since 2019, they've been on the platform of the Mavericks and the Stars play, and they empower every one of their employees to now see say, see something, say something. So we get stuff in all the time for from an usher that sees a broken chair or a wet spill where they just pull out their phone, they go to tell AC, they snap a picture of it, they send it in and central command, their average response time is under three minutes. They respond back to the customer, to the employee, because they put in hashtag EMP and their feedback, which designates them as an employee in the system, catches that and says, okay, this is from an employee. And they respond right back saying, hey, John, thanks for letting us know we're sending maintenance right now. And when you when you have the when you empower your employees to make a difference and they contribute and they see that the things that they're letting you know about get handled in real time on the spot and that you're really making the place safer and you're enhancing a guest experience, that really drives people to have a better workplace. They're happier with their contribution. Um, one of the things that we built was a, uh, a uh, anonymous feature. So now we see employees at various organizations will, will send in something and saying, hey, I've noticed that every time I come in, that my work area is dirty from the, you know, from the previous employee, or, hey, you know, I'm working harder than everybody else, but some of the managers overlook it. But it's giving them a voice to really, and they know that a manager is getting their feedback. You know, think about if you want to send anonymous feedback to your boss or a manager, you have to set up fake email address. I mean, it's a, it's a pain in the butt, but if I can go to a feedback platform that I'm, and I know that is anonymous and I can send something in, it really motivates me to make, to be a bigger part of the, you know, not just complain to my coworkers, but tell management about issues and have them fixed. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And I think we just need more of that open communication and constant feedback uh, to be able to address the types of issues that people are facing in real time. Uh, so many of the traditional forms of customer feedback or employee feedback uh, has been so disconnected and delayed from the actual experience, the point of pain, uh, that by the time anything ever gets addressed, if it ever does, it it almost doesn't even resonate with the person anymore. They don't even think about it or remember it. They just remember they had that bad experience and it wasn't addressed at the time. Um, and so all of this, you know, we have the technologies to do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's integrate this into our organization. Um, whether we're talking about face-to-face, -face, you know, in, in the office employees or remote or hybrid employees, retail or hospitality um, members, uh, and workers or whatever the industry may be. I think the principles we're talking about here apply and can make a big impact on the, the, the attraction and retention of great people, which will then feed into better customer service and lead to the, attra the attraction and retention of good customers who want to stick with your organization, uh, and, and will come back and again and again and again and help you, you know, to find success as, uh, as a company, whatever you, your product or service may be. Yeah, I think it's almost it's almost impossible to have a great company with happy customers without having happy employees because that it's a ripple effect that translates, you know, throughout the organization and then customers see it. I and mean, when there's when you have unhappy employees in your building or in your business, you know, customers are really uh, aware of that. One of the things I love to there's this a story that there was a uh, an employee that sent in a feedback to management said, hey, the employee break room, uh, rat, a bathroom has lights that flicker all the time since managers don't use that bathroom you know only the employees do and it's really bothersome when you're in the restroom and you see the lights are flickering on and off and he sent in a picture of the of the flickering of the light so the manager wrote back goes man i really appreciate it we would have never known we'll go ahead and have maintenance if you see any other bulbs or any issues in the building that need addressing i'm i'm, I'm all ears let me know and we can fix all at once the employee immediately during his lunch break went throughout the entire building and took pictures of every issue with lights in the building and sent in like 12 different uh, uh, feedbacks of, about every incident. And within within 24 hours, everything was fixed. And he wrote back and goes, man, I really appreciate it. I didn't know you guys really cared about something that I had to say. And he felt like he made a contribution, not just for him, but for the, for the for all the employees. He was like a hero for fixing the lights in the bathroom. 
So it's, you know, it's cool how- And we, such how a simple just, thing, such yeah, a such thing. a simple thing makes such a big difference, right? Because it's really, it, it tends to be death by a thousand cuts uh, for employees or for customers. Like oftentimes, especially if it's a place someone likes, you know, if, if traditionally and historically I've enjoyed being a team member uh, and a worker in an XYZ organization. You know, one little thing is not going to be enough to push me over the edge, but it's death by a thousand cuts. And it's all these little things that start to add up. Same thing with a really great customer, someone who's been coming to your restaurant for a long time, for years, you know, one bad experience with a dirty bathroom or having a problem with their order or whatever, that's not going to change their overall behavior if they already have a good history and a track record, but it it, it, it doesn't take too many of those experiences right. to start to erode at the trust that they have and to realize, you know, like, you know, this isn't worth my time anymore. Uh, and so just having a way to address those, those simple little things and not allow them to build up over time so that now people are just like, yeah, my, my boss doesn't care. My, my, uh, right. my organization doesn't care. They're, they're, and, and, and then you start to, you have all this self-talk going on in your head, whether it's accurate or not, you start to believe that, you know, your company doesn't value you. They don't uh, right. trust you. They're not going to be there to support you and et cetera. And then next thing you know, you're looking for your next job and you're, and you're out of there. Not only that, you know, you have the water cooler effect where employees are always complaining to other employees about, and then they get other people to, you know, to, you know, kind of agree with their misery. But when you have an open platform where people are openly communicating and letting management know about issues, I think that goes a long way to uh, to solve some of that stuff. It's uh, it's it's very interesting. You know, you go back to you know loyalty and customers. Obviously, you're aware with the, with the, about the uh, service recovery paradox, where you know if 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 one of your loyal customers has an issue and then you fix it quickly and immediately to their satisfaction, they're actually more loyal than a customer that's never had an issue at all. So you got to have those, you know, that open line of communication to let you know about issues. And and also, uh, I'm sure you know about CES, uh, customer effort score, how easy it is for a customer to reach you and, and let you know about issues. Some companies make it so confusing on how to leave feedback, the response rate for the feedback. Uh, Walmart is 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 one of the ones I always think about because I we've been trying to get their business for a long time. So before we have one of our meetings, we'll have one of our sales guys actually go through the complaint process on their website. And it's, you know, sometimes it's 12 days, 13 days before anybody responds to you. That's just unacceptable, especially in today's world. Everybody wants everything now. Amazon has ruined, you know, if we can't get anything tomorrow or the same day, we don't even look at, it's weird because when you look at Amazon now and you want to go order something and somebody says it'll be here like in three days, you go, ah, what is that? I'm not ordering that. It's too long. Everybody wants everything now. And just the uh, the environment we live in now is everybody wants. If you don't, if you're not taking care of me now, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. So let's recommit to having really great customer service. And again, external, you know, facing outward to our community, to our uh, customer base and the people that we're providing products and services to, but also internally. Let's think about the customers uh, internally within our organization. Uh, and let's think about the employee experience as well as the customer experience. If we can have better customer service, better uh, employee service and experience in both areas, uh, it becomes reinforcing. And uh, a happy employee is going to lead to happier customers. Happier customers also takes a bit of the load off of employees who often get stuck in the middle trying to, you know, help the the customer to to be happy with their experience, but also having to be the ones that are dealing with maybe less than ideal circumstances within the organization, uh, who are dealing with challenging policies or or whatever. And so when the customers are happy, employees also tend to be happier and right. and they're able to provide better service. And so let's just create a mutually reinforcing upward spiral of just great positive experience. And it starts with organizations investing into these types of systems so that we can have regular feedback loops. And like you said, the technology to provide immediate feedback and then the the ability to connect that back to a real human touch point uh, where you can get personalized attention, it'll make all the difference in the world. It really takes a commitment. A lot of companies, if, if you ask pretty much anybody 
that's in the customer service space at a, at a large organization he said, you know, do you want to have happy customers? And they go, oh, yeah, of course we do. But really, very few do take the commitment to actually do things to improve that customer experience. And one of the things we always ask, we always ask in the middle, middle of in the beginning of the pitch with a new client is, do you really want to know? Because there's a lot of organizations with their head in the, stand, in, in the sand and they don't put the tools in place to gather real-time feedback. But, you know, one of the questions is, do you want a commitment? Because once you know, you, your customers now expect, if you tell customers, hey, scan this QR code, let us know by your experience and we'll try to fix it. And then you send that in and then nobody responds to you, then that's worse than you might as well not have the platform at all because now you're making a promise that you're not delivering on. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Well, Adam, this has just been a really great conversation. I know at the time and I need to let you go here in just a minute. But before we wrap things up, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you and find out more about your work. And then give us the final word on the topic for today. Sure. Yeah. So uh, they can get in touch with me. The uh, The company's Real-Time Feedback. The The website is realtimefeedback.com. Uh, my name is Adam Alfia. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, and, uh, you know, we are passionate about uh, communicating customers, employees, and companies to make sure that everybody has a open dialogue and fix issues in real time and try to address issues before they fester. Nobody likes to, you know, have things that bothers them for a long period of time. And uh, we help, uh, you know, connect that bridge. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Again, I encourage my audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Adam and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. you enjoy the human capital innovations podcast enjoy ad-free listening by going to the patreon page and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level and please leave a review thank you for your support thanks again for joining us for this episode of the human capital innovations podcast I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.